So good morning and welcome back to the class on uh, smart materials and uh, structures. So can anyone let me know in two minutes what we were dealing about in the last class quickly so that I can proceed further. What was the thing we were dealing about in the last class? Dhanush? Uh, Ma'am, about uh, vibrations, parallel dampered vibrations and uh, uh, total internal reflections, optical fibers, ma'am. Yeah, so we dealt about the active vibration absorbers basically after the parallel damped vibration condition. And then we moved on into fiber optics. So what exactly is fiber optics? When was it invented? How the structure of fiber optic exactly looks like? Where it has three main parts, which is the core, cladding, and the coating layer. So the cladding and the core will be similar to the glass rods in cylindrical nature. So which will help to transmit the either electrical signal or the data from one end to the other without any constraint over the distance. So this we dealt about what are the three main components associated with optic fiber. Then we came into the physical phenomena basically related to the total internal reflection. How does it operate so that the equal amount of light incident at one end will be transmitted at the same thing on the other end. So this we dealt related to our total internal reflection part, right? So here we came across the refractive index N1, N2 with re respect to two different media, which is water and air. So water was in denser media and air was in lighter media. So we learned what happens when the incident ray is lesser and what happens when the incident ray is equal to the critical angle and when the incident ray is more than the critical angle, the total amount of light will be reflected back within the glass rod. So that in that in this case, there will be no loss of electrical power or the data or the light what you're transmitting. It will be transmitted from one end to the other because it won't get reflected to the air media. So this concept we studied with respect to the variation in the angle, right? So, and we had done until this slide, actually, we dealt about what is Snell's law. Basically, the light rays passes through the glass rod based on the Snell's law. So we discussed about what you mean by Snell's law also. So it is, again, related to the angle associated with the incident and the reflected angle. So sine theta 1 upon sine theta 2 will be proportional or equal to the ratio of the refractive index of the media N2 upon N1. So N2 is basically the air media and N1 will be basically the water media. So as per the sense law, the angle associated with the reflected and the incident ray will be equal to the refractive index of the air media to the refractive index of the water media. So until here, we had dealt about, right? So what was a small part which was associated to deal with is what happens when the incident ray is greater than that of its critical angle. So when it is greater than critical angle, both theta 1 and theta 2 will be equal. You can observe that in the slide before. So here the incident angle is lesser than critical angle. So this is a critical angle at which if it gets reflected, it will fall on the surface of the air media. So this is the angle, what we call it as a critical angle. If the incident ray is more, if the incident angle is more than that of the critical angle, then theta one will be equal to theta two and total amount of light, which is incident, will be reflected back within the same media, means it was reflect it was passed through the water media it gets reflected back into the water media only so there is no loss of light or electrical signal whatever is being transmitted so this is about the value what happens when theta one is greater than or equal to theta c so with that aspect this principle of total internal reflection could be used successfully in transmitting the light from one location to the other. So this is done with the help of a pipe. So this pipe usually will be transparent. Okay, so this concept of theta one greater than equal to 
theta c will be applicable to transmit the light from one location to that of the other so this pipe is basically called to be as a glass rod or an glass fiber so if you pass or if you put an incident light passing into the pipe at this end so this will be reflected within the glass rod why because here the theta 1 and theta 2 with what it gets reflected will be equal and hence it won't get reflected back outside the media so if this is the glass rod so it gets reflected within the glass rod and hence the equal amount of light which has been incidented here will be transmitted outside at the outlet where it is needed so there will be no loss of light power or the data what you want to transfer from one end to that of the other so this is hence called the successive reflections which help to pass the equal quality of light which is entering here into the outlet so this is how the working principle of the light rays will be trapped enough to get the required output where it is needed so this was it is not a new topic it's what started in the history from 1880s i told you the history of uh, optical fibers when it was it is right from 1880 alexander graham bell was the first person to introduce this optical fiber but latest implementation of this concepts into the application came only in 1980s okay so this principle is used in today's day to day life applications also right majorly it is used in building the it infrastructure for the entire organization which has different branches so that the data can be transferred from one end to that of the other without any barriers so one of the major application is associated with the transfer of data so there are other applications also related to medical and other fields we'll deal with this later so this is about the concept of the optical fiber and how does it operate any doubts related to this hello no ma'am if any doubts kindly ping me up in between yes ma'am so this is yeah so this is about the function of the light optical fiber and the phenomena sometimes they ask you the experimental phenomena ya yeah, physical phenomena of how does an internal total internal reflection works so if they ask you the total internal reflection also you kindly speak about what you mean by optical fiber just draw a sketch and write few lines for three different parts and then come exactly to total internal reflection draw the sketch and explain the entire phenomena of incident ray and the refracted ray what is the importance of the critical angle what happens when theta 1 is equal to theta 2 so this is the way how the light gets transmitted or the data with the help of this glass rod or glass fiber diagram you kindly explain so once you are thorough with the concept they can sometime ask you about the numerical aperture of the glass fiber or the glass rod so now you know the components of the glass fiber i told you it has three main components one is the core other one is the cladding and apart from that you have the coating layer i have shown you initially in the last class also see so you have a core part cladding and the coating so these are the three major components of the fiber part optics okay so this cladding will be uh, compacted with the help of a strength member and this will be covered by the outer jacket to safeguard the body but these are the three important components so associated with this three important components you have to know about the numerical aperture how does it operate basically so this is the center part which is the core it is surrounded by the cladding i told you how does it operate with respect to two media one will be the denser media and the other one will be the lighter media so the denser media was considered here to be as n1 and n2 as we dealt upon in our uh, example here we took air as a lighter media and water as a denser media so refractive index for the water was n1 and for air it was n2 similarly here now in place of water media we are considering the core and in case of air we are considering the cladding area when it comes to the optical fiber but the principle remains the same so here n1 we are taking into as the core 
uh, and N2 will be the cladding area. So the refractive indices of N1 will be more in comparison to that of the cladding because core will be more densely packed than that of the cladding. But both will be made up of glass, which will be transparent enough to visualize how the rays are incident and reflected. Okay, so this is a phenomena, the physical phenomena, how does it vary in operating for the use of fiber optic. So when the light rays is made to pass on, so this is the incident ray which is being made to pass through the core. So this is the incident ray. So when you apply an ray of light through the core, if the incident ray is equal to that of the reflected ray, so then the light rays gets reflected within the core. It won't go for the cladding and the rays of light from the input to the output could be transmitted. In that case, it follows the Snell's law. I told you what is Snell's law. So the ratio of sine theta, the ratio of sine theta i to that of sine theta c will be equal to n2 upon n1, right? So the ratio of the incident angle to that of the critical angle with respect to the sine function will be proportional to the refractive index of the cladding to that of the refractive index of the core media. So it follows the Snell's law. Once it follows the Snell's law, the total amount of light which has been incident into the core will get reflected within the core only. And then it transfers from one media to the other. So this is a function. How does it operate? The same example what we studied now is imparted into the optical fiber. The terminology remains the same. Theta i, theta c, n1 and n2. So this is the thing what you have to consider. So now after this, you have a small relationship based on the Snell's law. So Snell's law, what does it tell? I told you now also orally, sine theta 1 upon sine theta 2 is equal to N2 upon N1. Sine theta 1, we told here, it is nothing but the incident angle in our case now. So in place of theta 1, you'll be writing theta i. And in place of theta 2, it is the critical angle. So you'll be writing theta c. So the same concept here is being written. As per the Snell's law, the sine theta i upon sine 90 minus of theta c will be equal to n1 upon n2. Okay. So this, you just leave it. This is directly equal to n1 upon n2. Why? Because sines of 90 minus theta will be equal to cos theta. So next you can replace sine 90 minus of theta is equal to cos theta. But this is again a critical angle. So you have to write theta suffix c. So here you'll be having sine theta i. Okay, so this is what you get with respect to the diagram over here. Now the question might arise you, why it is 90 minus theta c? Why? Because it is incident now with a particular angle. So this is the incident angle. So after reflecting, it touches some layer across the lighter media means this is the denser media and this is the lighter media. Lighter media is the cladding and the denser media is the core. Since theta i is not, is not very less than that of theta c, it won't get reflected outside. So what happens is it is almost equal to the critical angle and hence it gets reflected across the surface initially. Okay, so when this is theta c and this is theta i, if we just draw a reference line over here, the angle what it will be will be exactly equal to 90 degree minus of theta c. Because if you extend this line over here, you can see that this is theta c. So when you extend this reference line over here, this will be exactly 90. If this is exactly 90, you know now two angles. One is theta C, another one is 90. So obviously, the remaining part of the angle in this triangle will be 90 minus of theta C. And hence, it has been taken as sine of 90 minus theta C for the initial step. So as per the trigonometry, then you can change sine of 90 minus theta into is equal to cos theta. But don't forget to write which is the incident angle and the critical angle. So this is the equation what we write with respect to the diagram over here. Apart from that, 
from Snell's law, sine theta c is equal to n2 upon n1 because it is always proportional to the refractive index of the lower media upon the denser media. So lower media here will be the cladder and the denser media will be the core. So this is from the Snell's law. So by equating these two equations, okay, so you can identify the value for sine theta i is equal to n1 by n2 whole square minus 1 to the power of 1 by 2. Okay, so you will get one equation based on the diagram here what we have drawn for the numerical aperture means based on the dimension of the structure of optical fiber, you will see how the incident ray will be incident, how the light ray will be incidented and how it gets reflected for the first step. Once it is incidental for the first step, then theta 1 will be equal to theta 2, then it gets reflected within the core. But first time when it has been sent, it will get reflected across the surface of the cladding. In that case, this is the condition how it will be. So based on that, we showed the relation between the incident angle and the critical angle. Apart from that, we remembered what does the Snell's law tells. So we had two equations. So from the second equation, we could identify what is the sine value of the critical angle from the Snell's law. But we could not identify the value for the incident angle. And hence, what we will do, we will equate these two equations, 7.1 and 7.2. So when you solve these two equations, then you will get the value of sine theta i as told. Okay, so the quantity here, if you won't write 1 upon 2, it will be equal to square root of. If you remove square root, then you have to write to the power of half. If you are retaining the square root, then don't write to the power of half over here. So this part or the, this quantity is always referred to be as the numerical aperture. If in the examination, if they ask you to derive what is the quantity which you have to evaluate for the numerical aperture, you should be able to explain how the exact dimension of the optical fiber looks like, how will be the initial way in which the light has been incidented. So based on the dimensions, what will be the equation for the ratio of incident to that of the critical angle? Then based on the Snell's law, you'll write down the equation. Then you will equate these two and find out what is the incident angle with respect to our sine feature. Then you will take out the quantity with respect to the ratio of the refractive indices of the cladder and the core. Then you will say that this is the quantity which has been needed which is defined as the numerical aperture. Okay, so this value basically establishes the maximum angle of incidence that could be focused in a total internal reflection. Okay, so if you measure the values based on this refractive indices, you can evaluate which could be the largest incident angle through which the light can be made to pass through the given optical fiber so that the without any loss it would be used to get reflected back within the optical fiber so that the light can be transmitted from one end to the other so if you did because blindly you cannot incident the light if you incident the light with a small incident angle then it gets reflected outside the glass fiber or the glass rod then you cannot transmit the light from one end to the other so in order to evaluate what is the best incident angle which is needed to transmit the light from one input signal to that of the output, you should be knowing or you should optimize the incident angle. To optimize the incident angle, you should be knowing the quantity called as the numerical aperture. So once you know the dimension value, of this numerical aperture, you will come to know the refractive indices of both the media, one of the cladding and the core. So based on that, then you can provide your input 
of rays of light with respect to required incident angle so that it gets reflected within the core and helps in transmitting the light from one end to that of the other as shown here in the diagram is this clear how does it operate and how you can optimize the incident angle any doubts on it no ma'am okay so please listen carefully so if you understand the concepts you can please write in your own words so this is about the numerical aperture what you have to understand so after this so major part we have now dealt about what is optical fiber what is its physical phenomena how does it operate how you evaluate the quantity of the numerical aperture so based on that you can send the light rays so after knowing all the prerequisite data related to the optical fiber now you will be in a position to identify what will be the classification of the optical fibers see basically we have two types of classification one is based on the number of modes with which the light rays is transmitted second one is based on the reflective index so i have told you what do you mean by reflective index and how the light rays gets reflected how the incident angle and the critical angle plays a vital role in transmitting the light rays from one end to other so you have enough concepts in your mind right so based on that now you should think about how do you categorize so the light rays could be transferred in a single mode or it could be transferred in a multiple mode so based on the mode of transmission of the light rays or the data you can classify that into two types one is the single mode fiber and other one is the multi mode fiber it is also called in short as smf and mmf so these are the two modes which usually comes into picture right so other classification is based on the index if it is step index optical fiber you will call it as if the indexing thing is done in step wise you call that as in step index optical fiber if the indexing level of the optical fiber is with respect to grading then you call that as graded index optical fiber so based on these two classifications you have total four types of optical fibers so this you should be very careful so now coming for the first classification number of modes so based on number of modes we have two types the single mode fiber and multi mode fiber so if you have a light rose light source and if you have a glass rod or a glass fiber here and if the lights are being transmitted in a single mode means it is the only mode or only direction in which the light could be transmitted from input to that of output so it is only one mode of light rays which is passing through from the light source and hence it is called as single mode but when it comes for the multiple mode you can see here it has a regular mode as you had in single mode apart from that the light rays here are transmitted one in upward direction and other one in downward direction so this is the angle theta i right so this theta i will be equal to theta 2 and as a result it gets reflected back totally so theta i will be equal to theta 2 and as it gets reflected back the amount of light incidented will be reflected back within the glass rod bottom also the incident ray will be equal to the reflected ray and as it gets reflected within the glass rod so the amount of light which was transmitted to the optical fiber will be utilized and converged back within the optical fiber so there is no loss of electrical sorry the no loss of light which has been incident at this end so it utilizes everywhere theta 1 is equal to theta 2 it gets reflected within the glass fiber and huge amount of light rays from here will be transmitted to the required output signal so this is the difference between the single mode and multi mode in multi mode a huge amount of light source can be transmitted within a short period of time for a longer distance wherein in case of single mode only a single quantity of light rays will be transmitted from one end to the other so this is the difference between the two modes hope this is clear any doubts in it 
normal. Okay. So once you know the classifications, you should be knowing some dimensional quantities of it. So when we go for single mode, so this red color indicates the direction in which the light rays has been passed. So it is passed. So this is your core and this is the cladder. So light rays always passes through your core media, right? So it will pass in a single stretch. You won't be having any multi-direction of the light passing through. So the core diameter will be, usually, this is micro. The, usually the diameter of the core in single mode fiber will be five micrometer and high cladding diame diameter. So this is a cladder diameter. So the cladder diameter will be basically 70 micrometer. Okay, so this is the dimensional aspects in case of single mode fiber. And the difference, what we get in between the refractive index of the core and the cladding will be very small. So this is the one thing what you have to understand. So the refractive index values between the core and cladding is very much negligible. And there is no dispersion nor degradation without any uh, degradation and it is suitable for long distance communication. What is the main application of the optical fiber to transmit equal quantity of light rays or data in a faster rate in a longer distance? It don't have any constraints at all. So it can be easily transmitted within a short period of time. You know that light travels with a higher speed. And if you use optical fiber, which doesn't have any barriers and no restriction with respect to length, it could be used for longer distance communication. Even this is used in our telecommunication applications as well, right? So wherever you want to transmit the light, the signal, the input of electrical from one end to the other, if you use optical fibers, it helps you to send in a very short period of time. So these are the uses <coughs> of single mode fiber. Similarly, multi-mode fiber, I have explained how the movements of the light rays will be. Now, with respect to the dimension part, in case of multi-mode fiber, the core diameter will be a little bit higher than that of the single mode. In single mode, it was just only 5 micrometer, whereas in case of multi-mode fiber, it will be 40 micrometer and the cladder diameter will be the same. In even in case of single mode, the cladder diameter was 70 micrometer. And even in multi-mode, it is 70 micrometer. And one more uh, thing here is there will be degradation. In case of single mode, there was no degradation. The entire stretch of input light rays could be transmitted freely without any barrier into the output where you need the signal transmission. But whereas in case of multi-mode, it can result in signal degradation. Why? Because you have many light rays which are passing through. So due to many light rays passing through inside the optical fiber, it might result in case of single degradation. And hence, this type of multi-mode optical fiber is not suitable for longer distance communication. Right. Suppose again, you can take an example of telephone. If you take n number of light rays or the signals which has been transferred, then you cannot get a clear voice of the communication which has to be transmitted in the longer distance. So that is always preferable with respect to single mode of fiber. And hence, these are the drawbacks in multi-mode fiber. So we can use either the single mode or the multi-mode fiber based on the applications or the requirement. So on those, you can go whether you need a single mode fiber or a multi-mode fiber. So this was the classification based on the mode. After that, I told you that we have a second part, which is the classification with respect to the reflective index. So now you have to see how the classification is made with respect to the refractive index. You know what do you mean by refractive index? We have studied already. So based on the refractive index concept, we have two classification. One is the step index optical fiber. Another one is the graded index optical fiber. So I've shown you the diagram for step index fiber as well as the graded index fiber. So what happens here? You can see the outer dimension is for the cladder and the inner dimension of the optical fiber is for the core. 
So here the dimension for the core will be 200 micrometer, which is larger than that of the single mode and the multi mode, what we studied exactly. And the cladder diameter here will be 380 micrometer, even this is larger. So due to this, you will be having a step here, the huge difference. In the previous case, there were not much differences. In case of single mode, right so dimension here was 5 micrometer and 70 micrometer and here it was 40 micrometer and 70 so there was no more gap between the core and the cladder but here there is a difference and hence it results in the formation of a step like cross section when we see means you will be having a little variation and as a result you can observe this is the input pulse which has been given and this is the output pulse what you are receiving that shows that there is some loss of the light rays which has been transmitted due to the variation in the cladder and the core dimension. So the amount of input pulse sent is not equal to the output pulse. The output pulse here is exactly half that of the input pulse. So there is some amount of loss due to the indexing so again indexing comes into the picture you have the refractive index for the cladder as well as the refractive index for the core so the value of the cladder and the core refractive index will be having some huge variation and hence there will be some loss of light rays which has been received at the output so there will be like a 50 percent as your output data in comparison to that of your input pulse so this is how it varies in case of step index fiber. Next classification is graded index fiber. So in graded index fiber, what happens is due to the problem here associated, it was seen here that there is no much huge variation between the core and the cladder. So here the diameter of the cladder was around 125 micrometer, which was nearly to half that of the previous one. And similarly here, instead of uh, 200 micrometer, the core dimension was restricted to 50 to 100. So you can set an value for the diameter of the core based on the requirement within the range of 50 to 100. So now you can see this was the side view. How did the optical fiber look like? So here you could observe that the step which was formed here due to the huge difference between the cladder and the core was now reduced. There was no formation of the step as such. So when you compared the input pulse to the output, you could observe it was comparatively better than that of the step index fiber because there was a 50% loss here, exactly half the graph here, but wherein you can see that at least you received, received something better than that of step index fiber. So that was due to the reduction of the dimension between the cladder and the core. So this is the second case, graded index fiber, but still you didn't achieve the same. If you achieve the same, means the inputs, input pulse should be equal to the output pulse. In that case, the equal quantity of the light incidented could be transmitted with an equal measurement. If that is not happening, if there is a loss, then there is a huge lot of investment behind optical fibers. It cannot be economical to use for a longer run. So you should see that how you modify the dimension between the core and the cladder so that the input pulse will be almost equal to that of the output pulse what you are receiving. So for that, only the best option was single mode fiber. So what happens in single mode fiber? You are still reducing the dimension of the core. So it is good to get equal measurement of the pulses if the dimension of the core is very small. So later, they reduce the dimension of the core to 10 micrometer only and the outside cladder diameter was 125 micrometer. So in this case, they could observe clearly that the input pulse was almost equal to the output pulse what they received. So these are the three main classifications under refractive index. Hope this is clear. Any doubts? No, ma'am. 
yeah so you should be knowing how to classify based on what it has been asked so we studied based on both the type of uh, classification one is based on the refractive index and the second one is based on the number of modes so after you know about the classification this i have explained you already you should know exactly how one communication system could be made possible by using optical fiber so until now we were speaking about just the structure or the component of optical fiber how does it operate how the incident ray and the critical angle plays a vital role and later we spoke about the numerical aperture to see that how you can optimize the incident angle so that there will be no loss of light which gets reflected outside the core so after knowing we dealt about the classifications of optical fiber but all these speaks about the concepts of optical fiber but how this optical fiber could be put on for a particular application basically from many from past few decades this optical fiber is used for an communications system example telecommunication how it is made possible which are the other components which has been needed apart from the optical fiber so you should be knowing about that then only you can come to know how this concept of optical fiber could be applied for telecommunication so now i am showing you a small diagram over here which has the entire cycle which helps in transmitting the communication from one end to the other right so you can see uh, you have to start reading from here it comes like this 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 way this way and finally the destination so you should be able to read the diagram from which you have to go through so the directions will help you basically to understand so first one is you need an information source to start up so what is this information source you can see here the first block which is the source of information so it provides an electrical signal why electrical signal is needed because it has to transmit the data from one stage to other and hence this information source will provide the required electrical signal so that it helps in transmitting the data what has been needed so this information source will provide the required electrical signal data so it comprises of all the data associated with the electrical component so once this is ready once it provides electrical signal you should be having some transmitter so basically we use an electrical transmitter so what does this electrical transmitter do it drives the optical source because you have a optical source here you have to transmit this light to that of the optical source so that that could be readable by the optical fiber and hence this transmitter will drive the optical source which helps to derive the light waves it cannot directly transmit the electrical signal to the optical cable it has to be transferred in a media in which the optical fiber can sense the data which is coming inside so optical fiber can basically sense the light wave which is passing through so to convert the electrical signal to that of the light wave you need to have a optical source so this optical source will help in providing the light rays to the optical fiber in the form of light wave so this is the uh, what the requirement of the optical source so in optical source you should be having some illumination media which helps in glowing the light so basically led is being used okay either a laser is been used which helps in transmitting the light rays so laser or an led both will work well okay so based on the requirement you can either go with a laser or an led light so that it throws the rays of light across the optical fiber so it will decide with what angle the light rays has to be incident to the optical fiber so the light rays will be incident based on the numerical aperture quantity what you will measure so they will make the light rays pass on into the optical fiber so this work is been done by the optical source so once it is done it comes to the optical cable right so in optical fiber you will be having the optical cable 
So what does it do? It serves as a transmission media. So now this optical cable has to transmit the light which has been incident at this point to here. So you'll be having an optical fiber cable which will transmit the light from this to that. If it has to transmit equal amount of incident light at the output pulse, you should see that the light rays gets reflected within the optical fiber only. Then only the equal amount of input pulse could be received at the output. Okay, after it is done, so this is a function of the optical fiber. Once it is done, it will go for the optical detector. So optical detector usually will be a photo detector. So what does it do? It is responsible for converting the optical into the electrical data conversion. Because the optical fiber will provide you the data which is readable by the optical fiber. So it will be in the form of optical rays. But when you want to transmit this to the electrical stage again, it has to be converted into the electrical signal. For that, you need some media which converts. So you are using a photo detector. So you can use different type of photo detectors, right? It could be photodiodes, it could be phototransistors, or it could be photoconductors. So this will convert the optical data into the electrical data. For that purpose, to convert the optical signal to the electrical signal, we use the photo detectors. So once this conversion is done, then again, it will be transmitted to the next stage, which is the electrical receiver. So electrical stage is nothing but the component which receives the electrical signal, which is converted from the optical data with the help of photo detector. So finally, the electrical signal will be transmitted here. So electrical receiver will receive all the electrical signals which are converted from the photo detector. So once it receives all the electrical signal that will be transferred to the, your destination. So this is a final point where you have to send the electrical signal. So the equal amount of electrical signal which is transmitted from the source will be sent to the destination without any loss if the incident ray will be reflected back within the optical fiber in each and every phases. So this will be how a successful communication could be transferred from one end to that of the other without any losses if you use an optical fiber cable. So this is the working principle of optical fiber for a communication system. Hope this is clear. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So in the next class, we will be dealing with the fiber characteristics. So if I start again, it takes like uh, description of the diagrams. It will take time. We will start up in the next class. That will be better. So after knowing fiber optics, its component, how does it work? You should know the characteristic feature of fiber optics. So you should understand which is the material which has been used to develop the fiber characteristics. So how that could be used in evaluating the refractive index. Any variation if you come across if the core thickness is more. So all these we have to deal about. So this I'll be taking care in the next class. And currently if you have any doubts, kindly let me know. So let me ask few questions related to what you have understood instead of giving you the quiz directly. Yeah, Danush, you're there. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. So what did you understand in today's class? Ma'am, about the uh, optical fiber communication system, the optical cable, optical uh, detector, uh, the electrical mm -hmm. receiver and the destination, ma'am. Okay. So, so were you aware about optical fiber before the class started? Ma'am? Had you been heard about the word optical fiber before we started? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So where you had come across? Ma'am, uh, in internet cables, uh, they'll be using optical cable, uh, optical uh, fibers, ma'am. Yes. Have you seen? Sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that in person? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. So apart from that, any other applications you are aware enough for optical fibers? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. So we deal with respect to application part also. It has application in endoscopy also in medical applications and some other where you can transfer the required electrical signal in a very faster way, telecommunication and transmission of internet data from one end to other. So there are many applications apart from that. You can think about uh, some new concepts through which you can develop some new devices also, right? So this is about the thing, what I was supposed to ask you. So be attentive in the class so that you can answer well. Harsha, you're there? Harsha? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, how are you? Fine, ma'am. Yeah, what did you understand in today's class? They are discussing about the number of modes of the fiber optic. Number of modes of? Fiber optics. Number of modes of fiber optics. Did I tell you number? No, ma'am. After all, more. Transferred. 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 Number of modes of. Ha. Huh. Number of modes usually comes in vibration absorbers, what we did in the last class. Okay, active vibration controller we dealt no in that. So here we speak about the refractive index, the ratio of the refractive index of the core as well as the cladder. So how we optimize the yeah, how we optimize the incident angle. Okay. And we dealt about numerical aperture, then what is Yes, and lastly, we dealt about the classifications also. Yes. Sandesh, you are there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what is the importance of numerical aperture? I told you while explaining why it is needed, basically. Hello? It, it should obey Snell's law. Yeah, you will follow Snell's law. I agree. And finally, we define some quantity as a root of N2 upon N1 minus 1, right? What is that called? Is the quantity what we measure in numerical aperture? Why it is needed, I told you. That value is needed to optimize your incident angle with which you want to ins make your light pass through the core. So to optimize that incident angle, this uh, quantity of numerical aperture is needed. I told you this sentence. Hope you remember. Yes, then what else you understood in the class today? <clears throat> Components of uh, fiber optics. It, yes. Uh, and the working principle. Mm -hmm. Total internal reflection and light trap mm -hmm. inside a fiber. Yes. And classification of uh, optical fibers, lens law. Yes. Multimode fibers. Yes. Which is better, Sandesh? Multimode or single mode? Multimode. Why? Uh, because uh, more the, there will be a communication. Uh, it can pass more uh, information. It so, can pass more information. I agree. But I told you one drawback also. Can you tell me one? Whether multi-mode is feasible enough in transmitting the communication over longer distance, yes or no? No. Why? Uh, there are you... signal degradation. Yes, there will be signal degradation because you will be having the light rays, very well told. 
so that from different direction so it results in degradation of the quality of the data being transferred so always for communication in a longer run single mode is most feasible enough okay yeah, yeah. mohanambal you are there good morning Mithun, you are there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, how are you? I am fine, ma'am. What about you? Yeah, 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 me fine. So what did you understand in today's class? Can you give me the classification for single mode and refractive index mode? Sorry, the classification for classification of uh, optical fiber based on modes. How you classify? It is single mode and hello. No answer. That means you haven't listened. Are you there? Single mode and multi mode, ma'am. Yes. What happens in single mode and what happens in multi mode? The name itself suggests in single mode, you will be having the transmission of the light rays only in single direction. Here, the light rays will not be incident in different angles. Whereas in multi-mode, you'll be having the transmission of the light from more than one direction. So that huge amount of data could be transmitted. That is the difference, okay? Mithun? Okay, ma'am. Yeah, one, what else you understood? I only answering your questions. What you understood from today's class? Snail's law, total internal reflection. Okay. Difference between the current lighting diameters. Mm -hmm. Can you throw some light on it? What happens if the difference between the core and cladder is high? And what happens if the difference between the core and cladder is low? Just answer to this one question. If the difference is uh, very high, then the output mm -hmm. is, uh, we get the much, more, much amount of output. If the difference is very high, you get much amount of the output, is it? Yes, ma'am. If the difference is very high, there will be loss in the output pulse. In what way you told? If it is, if uh, uh, what I mean to say is the core dimension should be very less, okay? So then the input pulse and the output pulse will be equal. If the core dimension is increasing drastically, then what happens is it will be loss in case of output pulse. So you should focus on constraining the dimension to the optimized value to get the input pulse equal to that of output pulse, okay? Any other doubts? Yeah. Fine then, everyone write your name and USA number in the chat room. I'll just call the attendance. Danush? Yes, ma'am. Mithun? Yes, ma'am. Mohan Ambal? I don't know where she went. Uh, Sandesh? Yes, ma'am. Srinidhi? Srinidhi is not there. Sukrut? Arsha? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So everyone take care. Have a nice day. We will meet in tomorrow's class. Kindly be attentive. So then only you'll be able to answer the questions which has been asked. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you.